South African photographer Graham Williams has photographed professionally for over 30 years. He now hosts one of YouTube's best photographic channels, Photographic Conversations. Today, he joins us on The Crit House to talk about his artistic influences with imagery from David Goldblatt, Gary Winogrand, Mary Ellen Mark, Alex Webb, and Stephen Shore. Graham, it is, um, I have to say, uh, you have one of the more impressive YouTube channels that's out there. And I, I don't know how long you've been doing it, but um, I have been watching it over the last uh, couple of, I guess, month or so. And every single video I watch, I learn something and I have, I gained something from it as a photographer. So thank you for that. But also um, let's talk about you as a photographer um, and what your career has been like as well. I do. No, well, I appreciate you putting me on. And yeah, now my channel is um, pretty young. I've been going for, I think, just over two years. But I've been consistent. I've been putting out one video per week, every week, Saturday. <laughs> and I think it's the only way. One's just got to really kind of go for it in a methodical way. Yeah, but well, let, me just, let me just say for the viewers out there who don't, don't know you, smart informative um well produced um just an just an excellent channel i really honestly I, I will i'll say it here i think it's the best channel out there now so um thank you <laughs> thank you for helping me as a photographer to learn more um tell us tell us a little bit about yourself as a photographer you were you started uh, early on as a photojournalist and you have done other things since then what how do you talk about yourself as a photographic person so growing up during apartheid, I was drawn towards the documentary side of uh, photography. And, you know, one of the large influences we had was David Goldblatt. And you'll see later one of the photographs that I've chosen is one of his. Being a photographer here is, is sort of different. Things have changed so rapidly and society has shifted, you know, from the harshness of apartheid through the transition to the sort of problematic post-apartheid South Africa, it's all been, you know, <laughs> I think the whole country is suffers from PTSD. So I started in a kind of documentary long project format, and then there was a sense that the country was going to go through transition. And I wanted to be closer to what was going on. So I walked into the Reuters news agency office in Johannesburg and said, you know, here's my impressive portfolio, which had zero <laughs> news <laughs> photographs. We've been talking about having you come on and uh, you had to decide on five images to discuss. Five images, I, I, I usually tell people, what are the images that have influenced you to become the photographer you have become? And you've chosen five. Was there a, is there a theme? How did you choose those, Im those images? I thought about it quite seriously because it was never something that I, you know, I've always said, okay, there's probably 10 photographs I could put in my top 10. But the question of what has influenced me is what did, I thought about that and I really wanted to look at what photographs had shaped the way I look at photography. This choice is the photographs that have influenced how I've broadened my visual language and how, how I approach photographs and the projects that I'm trying to build. Well, let's, uh, let's take a look at those images. So your first image comes from David Goldblatt, um, who has been featured on the program once before by another South African photographer, Alex Kilby was with us and, uh, and he uh, brought David Goldblatt to my attention as well. Talk about why this is here. David Goldblatt was initially mentor, then friend, then colleague. We had a few business ventures together. So he, he and his work had a major influence on my life. I think this photograph was probably one of the first that I saw that I understood that you could communicate on complex a complex level. You know, I was used to seeing images, but not necessarily understanding how one can, through bringing in various elements, add depth to the picture. 
you know, one could look at this photograph as on um, superficial level is, you know, possibly something her uncle took, just a picture a snapshot of this young girl showing off her new tutu and her ballet moves. But then knowing who David is and knowing his body of work, one would then think, okay, why did David Goldblatt take this photograph? So you look at her and she's got a naive innocence, um, joyful look on her face, and she's completely lost in the moment. But the secondary story and probably the most impactful story is happening around her. The first thing one notices is she's standing on the patio of what looks like a very average suburban middle-class home. When one then looks at, say, her dreams and thinks she probably dreams of being in the Paris Opera House doing Swan Lake, but because of her suburban upbringing, and she's probably not going to get past school ballet. And so there's something not even sad, just human about that fact that one is limited by so many things in life. And then also this photograph comes from one of David Goldblatt's um, essays called In Boxburg. It's a, it was a book. He was looking at this town, which is now a distinct city on the outskirts of Johannesburg. He chose it because he wanted to show what a typical small African city town looks like at, during apartheid. When one looks at this photograph and you see the beams that are above this young girl and the shadows of the beams and the, and the upright in the background, one's aware that there's, she's caged, hmm. not only by her suburban limitations, but also by the broader societal structures that are so limiting for her and so many other people. Your second image comes from uh, Gary Wittegrand, who in, in doing this program now, I've started to realize is really the photographer's photographer. More people have featured Gary's work uh, than almost anybody else in, in, the, in the program. So um, tell us why for, Gary is here with you, for you. Yeah, well, I mean, Gary Winogrand always underplayed his sophistication. You know, it, he would always, in interviews and things, just say, oh, well, I'm just out there photographing or whatever. So, you know, he he wasn't one to kind of overanalyze. But he was an incredibly sophisticated, visually literate photographer. You know, none of these, I mean, continuing on from our, the end of that previous discussion on David, there's no way... Gary Winogrand thought this through. This was a spontaneous action. You know, probably that he either called that woman or she was posing for someone else. But what is just so remarkable, remarkable about this photograph is not only the humor, you know, she's got these ridiculous glasses on, <laughs> but <laughs> the rep, I mean, he's used repetition brilliantly you know the two sides of the spectacles right. is mirrored by these two rhinos that are looking away so it's absolutely perfect and then you have the two windows at the back of the in the structure at the back what's also fantastic about this photograph is one's told in photography 101 which i never ever did is never take a photograph in bright sunlight in the middle of the day and because you'll never get a good, decent photograph. And here it is one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. I will say my my grandmother had those sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're probably cool again. But... <laughs> <laughs> they probably are. Great image. Thanks for thanks for discussing it. And this one from Mary Ellen Mark. Um, and I, I this is not one I had seen before. It is not one that. Uh, uh, that I think of when I think of the work of Mary Ellen Mark, but here it's one of your influences. This I found, I must have been about 18 in an old Aperture magazine that I bought at a secondhand bookshop. 
and I was paging through and I saw this photograph and it just stopped me in my, my tracks. Just his sort of angelic look and the slight blue tone that's coming through the dark, especially on the right. But what really moved me about this photograph was the exoticness of the situation. One's aware it's, the photograph is called Runaway Boy in Bombay Cafe. And I just, you know, I also grew up in a suburban suburb of Cape Town. And I just, you know, the, what moved me so much, not only is it a beautiful photograph, but I wanted to have the life that Mary Ellen Mark had. And I wanted to go to exotic places and see amazing things and take photographs. Well, and take great photographs like she does. So she was an inspiration for me and this photograph in particular. Alex Webb with this fantastic image. And this, this may be the image that has been featured more on this program, um, which, and everyone has a different take on why this is important and what they see in this image. So, so tell us a little bit about this one, Graham. Yeah, this photograph for me is a real masterpiece. Being able to <clears throat> create order out of chaos. That's exactly where these images came from. Okay, so there, there were two books that really blew my mind on his under a grudging sun, mm -hmm. as he did in Haiti, and hot light, half made world. I mean, if there's a theme that's coming through in this little chat of ours, it's 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 how information, you know, you can learn as you go along as a photographer and build up your visual literacy. And so if you if you break down this photograph, it's really complex. You've got you know, Possibly the geometrical center focal point is that shadow, uh, boy in shadow in the middle. But your eye doesn't rest there because he's forcing you to shift around this image. If you just look at him, the shadows on either side, diagonally to the right and to the left, balance him. The pole balances him. The lines going towards him and away from him. Then you've got the sense, the color balance, you've got the woman with the blue dress and the red scarf writing in blue and red on the uh, box in the foreground, a repetition on the lady in the back. You are forced to, to roam around, but there's enough symmetry to allow your brain to say, yes, um, I, I can stay here. So you have uh, brought Stephen Shore in for your final image for discussion. Yeah, this is a real nothing scene. Totally. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, this, <laughs> and this is why, you know, Stephen Shore was such a visionary photographer because at the time that he took these photographs for uncommon places, this kind of photographs, 99% of, 0.9% of people would have said this is a failure. Oh, I would have I would have been at this gas station and I would have been, let's go find some place that's interesting to photograph. I would have exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But but what he's doing, I mean, and what it taught me is how you can communicate in a subtle and multi-layered way through landscapes. So if one gets beyond the initial what the hell is this about? Yeah. You you start to look at it and think, well, what is this photograph doing in the book? All you've got is this forecourt of the gas station. Then the, the middle section is very bland tonally. And the sky takes up half of the image. And, and there's is no detail in the sky at all. It's a boring sky. There's nothing. Boring there. sky. Yeah. But I mean, what he's done for us as a viewer is given us very little. We are initially attracted to the rectangular shapes. Then we delve in and we think, mm, okay, I can see this red fence and we get to the Firestone sign and oh yes, that 
links to the roadside um, shop a bit further down the drag, but mm, nothing really here. And then what happens is, for me, I almost start to feel what it was like for Shaw to have stood in that very hot Arizona town. One can almost smell the dusty air and the, you know, with a hint of gasoline. It's the ability of this photograph to shock by banality and then draw you in to allow you to feel more what that place felt like. Yeah. The more you look at them, the more you understand and the more you actually want to go back and look again. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to going looking back once again. So Graham Williams, uh, South African photographer, what a pleasure talking to you here on the Crit House. Thank you so much for joining us. I feel like, um, I, as I said before, your channel is amazing. I learn something every time I watch it, and I certainly learned a lot from you today. Thank you for joining us on The Crit House. Brilliant, Jeff. I appreciate it. And thank you all for watching The Crit House.